last time on Doki Doki Tropical Rain. But I just wanted to say happy birthday. Wait, what do you mean happy birthday? Did I? Hold on, it is my birthday, isn't it? She giggled. Oh, she was being coy. Thank you, Finn. Hey, yo, let's go. It reminds me of you. What? What? You did not. You you did not. I got lost and I just, I'm in a portable toilet and I, her voice cracked. I just cannot breathe and I, it's, I just feel close to just, and I. The line caught off. Yuri? Yuri, hey. Did she hang up? I'll look at my phone screen. It was off. Raising an eyebrow, I pressed the power button. Uh, the no battery symbol felt like a punch in the gut. Well, shit. <laughs>will definitely find her. Don't you worry, fellow Yuri fans, we'll find her. Yuri cried out. He hung up. She wailed and her tears flowed freely. He hung up. She began to bawl. What now? What was she to do? Did he hate her that much? That he would hang up on her? Even... Even though he... Even though he said he would be there. Uh... It was just a game to him, wasn't it? He was just stringing you along to mess with you. He planned this from the very beginning. She breathed heavier. No, he... he is not like that. She breathed harder. Glob, can her heart just... can it stop? She felt the urge to slam her fist to the ground. She couldn't control her breathing. She deeply inhaled and held her breath. Uh, um, he hung up on you. She let out her breath and shakily inhaled. Even after all that, she continued to bawl. But she had to stop. She couldn't take it anymore. She needed to calm down. She snapped her fingers nervously and reached into her purse. She dug around for anything. Anything. Anything sharp. Yuri, didn't you say you're going to stop? No, we're not doing this again. Just a small one. She muttered to herself over and over and over again. Dang it, where's her blade? Where's her pocket knife? She flexed her fingers. She could only do a small one. Practically unnoticeable, really. Just a small slice. Maybe only a little bit of bleeding. No, stop it. Get some help. No. That's not so bad. After all, quitting cold turkey has never worked. Never. She kept digging around. Son of a... Her hands touched a matte black container. She remembered what was in it and quickly pulled it out. She popped off the container, grabbed a knife and flipped open the blade. Uh... Finn. Heart. It was almost... Poetic. Poetically mocking, that is. She exhaled deeply, trying to clear her head. It was shaky, and the hot tears still rolled down her cheeks. Just a small one. He won't even know. Even if he did, though, he probably wouldn't care. He winced. She pulled back her sleeve and touched the blade to a clean spot. It was near her wrist vein. She never, ever risked something like this. But it was going to be a small cut. She was not going to be cutting any veins. She took a deep breath and applied pressure. But she couldn't go through with it. She couldn't. Was she making the right choice here? If it was a small cut, she... she was still... He hung up. Maybe he's coming. He hung up. Yes, but... Almost against her will, she applied more pressure. It was starting to sting. He... it's just so unlike. Something slammed into the portable toilet. Everything rocked and she chomped, scared out of her mind. Uh, 
He stood up quickly and dropped the knife, feeling immense pain. Liquid started to plink plonk down onto the plastic floor. Looking at the amount of blood, she felt herself get boozy again. No, that wasn't supposed to. She began to hyperventilate. No, no. She put her hand over her wrist and tried to apply pressure. But the bleeding wouldn't stop. It wouldn't stop. It wouldn't. This is bad. This was really bad. She held down a scream, turned around and grabbed the handle. She tried to open the door, but it wouldn't open. She pulled hard. It wasn't budging. What the heck? S somebody She wriggled the door handle. Her blood was getting all over it. She stained her sweater and her leggings. Somebody, please open the door. She pulled as hard as she could. It, is it is it locked? Shaking like an epileptic, even worse than before, she unlocked the plastic latch. She felt like an idiot, but this was not the time. He pulled. Still didn't budge. She was still feeling woozy. She was going to pass out any minute from the blood. She pulled the door, jiggled, pulled, jiggled. Son of a bitch! She pulled it, she pushed it against in anger and the door went flying open. He quickly lost her balance. She attempted to put her arms up to break her fall but she was too weak. She could only watch through her own eyes in abstract, empty horror as her head slammed into the concrete. Oh no. Hey, lady, are you... She wanted to say something. She wanted to say anything. But she didn't even know where she was. Snuck. Snuck. She was trying to swallow her own tongue. She couldn't move. She couldn't even fathom speaking. Uh, everything was just a blur of pain. Oh no. Yuri! Yuri! Dang it, where is she? She needs me. She's about to fucking cut again. Exactly. And she said to herself that she wasn't going to cut again after she... Oh my flippin' glob. I... And here I am running around like a headless chicken. Yuri! Babe, where are you? I can't waste any time. I need to find her. Yuri, where? I was wheezy, completely out of breath. Even as I slowly got more in shape, one thing I never changed was the fact that I was not a good runner. But I didn't care. Yuri needed the fucking flash right now! <laughs> Or Sonic, because you gotta go fast, boy. <laughs> Quick, tie this around her elbow. It'll hold off the bleeding until the paramedics arrive. Whoa, what? Is someone hurt? Slowing down, I notice a bunch of people crowded around a part of potty. Who got hurt? Uh, small thing in the back of my mind said it was Yuri. That I had been too late. But he didn't want to consider that. That was the worst case scenario. Uh, I just... I need to check. I need to make sure. Uh, hold her arm behind her head, uh, above her head. I slowly made my way up to the front of the crowd. Who got hurt? Obviously, it's Yuri. Who else would have been? Upon seeing who it was, I felt my knees awaken. Huh, <laughs> weaken. I, the person who had the big crowd, the injured person, the person bleeding out on the floor, uh, that person was my girlfriend. Oh no. I still consider that to be the worst day of my life. What was supposed to be a good day I had turned into a horrible one. The bright light had, the bright light that filled my life had dimmed. And the days after the carnival felt like just one long nightmare. What? Why are we in a cemetery? And also the um, tropical rain from the 
I, I believe this is the main theme played on the uh, on the main menu, but still, damn, what did 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 Yuri just? No, that's impossible. It was stained with tears, but I could still read it. Finn, I want you to have this. You seem to really like it. If your compliments were anything to go off of, so I hope you like it, Yuri. I clenched my fists. Dang it! I wiped my eyes and walked up to a headstone. I looked at the epitaph. I couldn't make it out, but I chalked that up to my eyes being clouded by tears. The name was clear as day, though. Yuri. Her last name wasn't written, and frankly, that got me slightly pissed off. But I didn't have the energy to fuss. I set down some flowers and the copy of the poem I wrote for the festival. I'm not sure if he, she liked it, but it was the thought that counted, right? I folded up Yuri's poem and put it in my pocket. Afterwards, I reached into my other park pocket and pulled out a quarter. I set it on top of the stone, feeling the cold surface on my fingertips. The metal clink was the only sound heard for miles. It's a ghost town. Oh, I chuckled. I know, I know. I'm an idiot. Uh, my smile faded. I just... I just wish you had the courage to tell me what that, what that I was. Another tear. Oh. I'll miss you, babe. Kissed the air and closed my eyes. Everything went dark shortly after. Chapter 10, I'm sorry. Whoa. My eyes slowly opened. The sterile, the, the sterile scent and look of a hot, uh, hotel. This isn't a hotel, dummy. Uh, and the look of a hospital invaded my senses. Ugh. But thin glob. I wiped my eyes. Was that just a dream or a nightmare? I'm pretty sure that was a nightmare because, of course, I'm sure Yuri didn't just die from all that. Like, jeez. It was just a dream. Hey! <laughs> ah, mod! You got me. You nearly got me, but holy freaking dang, I was about to, to cry out tears here, but man. Uh, I've been bamboozled. I sighed and, I, and looked at the notebook I still held in my hand. There was the start of a poem there. Lost. I am lost without your voice. I am lost without your touch. I'm lost without your feeling. I'm lost. Uh. I tore out the page, crumpled it, and tossed it into a nearby trash can. I missed, obviously, so I frowned and stood up. Uh. That may have been a dream just then, but nothing else was. I really did find Yuri laying on the ground at the carnival. She really did nearly die. And, ro and worst of all, they won't let me see her. She's been terribly hurt, and not sure how bad, and they won't even let me s <laughs> and they won't even let me in. They say it's immediately family only. Bull. I am her immediate family. Exactly. Exactly. That is just completely bullshit. She's the love of my life. Surely that counts for something. But I can't put up a fight. I picked up the piece of paper and threw it away. I'm in a hospital. This is the exact wrong place to start flipping out. So I asked myself, what the heck am I supposed to do? Just sit around? Sit around jerking myself off while I wait to know whether or not my girlfriend has to have her arm amputated? Or how many more surgeries she's going to be undergoing? I kicked my chair before I sat down. This is torture. The girl have all come to visit, but they were sh but they were all shunned by the doctors too. While it was nice to have them here, they were all very loving and supportive. They eventually had to go home. 
they all have parents and so they have so they all have curfews but i promised i would tell them when we can visit yuri but all that jack brings uh brings us back to square one killing time uh please just give me some good news hopefully hey yuri i brought something you might like I pulled out some tea packets from my backpack and two red solo cups. We're going to have to drink it cold, but hopefully that's not too gross. I filled the cups with water from the sink, opened the package packages and put the bags in. I grabbed a plastic spoon and stirred it a bit. Sugar? I asked. When I heard nothing back, I sighed. What am I doing? I poured out one of the cups and chucked both bags. I sat down next to Yuri's bedside and took a sip of my gross tea water. I massaged my nose and pulled out another thing I had brought with me. Two needles and some yarn. After a deep breath, I began to carefully knit. It was going to be a scarf. Something for Yuri to wear when she's fully recovered. To return to fever, I guess. From when she knit me this sweater. One that I. I rubbed the material on my sweater and my vision clouded up again. For what felt like the millionth time in a few. in only a few days. Dang it. Come on. I rubbed my eyes fruitlessly. No more crying, dang it. I needed to be strong. But I also needed a way to distract myself. The kneading needles and the tea were supposed to do that, but the tea is cold and I can't knit! I dropped the needles on the floor and held my head on in my hands. Afterwards, I began to cry. Major head trauma, they said, along with severe loss of blood. They say it in a more scientific terms in than that, but that was the, the general gist. Uh, the doctor said it was a miracle she was able to get here in time. A minute more and she would have been toast. She needed a lot done and fast. The most recent one was nearly the surgery Yuri had undergone. But according to the doctor, it was the final one. She would be fine. But that wasn't why I was crying. I was crying because I... Because it... That should be being there, dang it! I clenched my fist and practically wailed. It should be suffering, not you! Uh... Yeah. I felt terrible. I was happy to have heard the news of her living, but all it did was enforce more bad thoughts into my head. Her living even her living even being called into question was quite the reality check. This was a real problem. One I couldn't solve. I just I felt so helpless. I should have been able to solve it, but I couldn't. And I didn't. I should have charged my phone. I should have gotten a new one. Fuck, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm such a failure. You've... All you've been is such a sweetheart. You've... Been so perfect to me. She was everything I hoped for. She was the love of my life, plain and simple. Never once I questioned the relationship we had. Uh... But how many times has she, uh, faced Finn? You're a loser. You're not a knight in shining armor. You're not cool. You're not handsome. You're just some dumb kid. In an effort to make yourself cool, you, repl you replicate the hair of someone who is cool. But it doesn't work. Why would it? You can't put lipstick on a pig, as they say. Uh... Oh, you know what? I chuckled. You probably did what I did. It would be ironic. Sad, but ironic. Yuri started dating me because she wanted a boyfriend. Uh, is this how Monica feels? Of course not. And <laughs> Yuri didn't want a boyfriend because this is, again, all part of a commitment that you want to love each other. That's what um what a relationship is all about 
Her feels terrible. I grabbed Yuri's hand. Cold. I... I love you. Uh, you shouldn't love me back. I couldn't help you. I couldn't shoulder your burdens. What kind of... What kind of boyfriend... Hello? Oh my gosh, Yuri! Oh, a female voice spoke and rushed to Yuri, completely ignoring me. Oh, it's a female voice! Uh, excuse me? I asked and she turned to me. Uh, oh. I can't tell if you're Yuri's twin sister or something like that. <laughs> okay. Whoa. <sighs> Who are you? Yuka? Okay. Her name is Yuka. Do you know Yuri? Um, I'm her boyfriend. Are you her, uh... No, I am not her mother. It's just her aunt and legal guardian. Oh, so this is her aunt just that she's been going on business trips. I shouldn't call her me surprised because again, it's just a... Uh, it's just a repaint or a reskin rather and uh well reskin and repaint still same thing but <laughs> okay <laughs> but i'm told i have her eyes she certainly did i smiled briefly she inhaled do you know when she's going to wake up i heard what happened to her something about a, a suicide attempt i winced oh gosh she didn't try to kill herself. I know that. She wouldn't. Oh, thank goodness. But I but I know that she's sustained a pretty bad cut to her left wrist art, 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 artery, along with a pretty severe head injury. The doctors say it's a very low chance that she doesn't need physical therapy. I sound like a robot. Oh, baby. She leaned over and gave Yuri a kiss on the forehead. I watched as the blue-haired woman inspected Yuri. From her scarred arms to her bandaged head. She sniffled. Ah, sorry. I just... She spoke up, catching my attention. I see her like my daughter, you know. She wiped her eyes and turned to me. I mean, as soon as I heard my niece was in the hospital, I dropped everything to catch a flight back here. I'm horf... I'm horrifically jet-lagged, but that's besides the point. It's good that she has someone like you. Why is that? She, uh, told me about her parents. Oh, yes. Well, I'm glad she was close enough to you to tell you about that. I exhaled. Yeah, well, look where that got her. What? Don't worry about it. I looked at my I looked down at my feet and massaged my forehead. Uh hey kid. What? I was still looking at the floor. Don't be yourself up. You could have possibly known it was going to be like this. I looked up to her. But something you do know is that she loves you. How would you know? She was probably just faking it. Are you serious? She never shuts up about you. My eyes widened. Sorry, she loves you, okay? Just trust me on that. Uh, alright. I'll trust you, uh... You can just call me Yuka, and I don't know why Yuri's name is on that one, so... <laughs> uh, I guess it's just there to, uh, to throw you off in confusion. Okay, Yuka-chan. She giggled. <laughs> Yuka-chan. A few hours had passed since then. The sun should be setting soon. Yuka left, saying she wanted to get some sleep get some sleep after a long flight. She was going to be back tomorrow or something. That's okay. I would rather she stuck around, but she had to do what she had to do. Me? Well, my schedule is open. But even if it wasn't, I would still be here. I'm a last minute kind of guy. I want to be here for Yuri. Even if she isn't awake to see it. Apparently, it's not a coma. Thank the Lord. But this resting period is taking too long. Much too long. 
I breathe through my nose, uh, the, uh, the high-pitched noise being a distraction from that incessant beeping. When are you gonna wake up, babe? Uh, nothing, huh? No sleeping beauty crap? Of course not. Why would that be the solution? I rubbed my forehead. I just didn't know what to do. Part of me was scared that she wouldn't wake up. And that was ridiculous. She was sleeping off the anesthesia. Uh, right? Why then? Why is she still asleep? The doctor said it would take longer f than normal to wake her for her to wake up. Some bullcrap with head trauma and a severe loss of blood. She needs a lot of rest, they said. How much rest, huh? How much? My thoughts were interrupted by a voice over an intercom. Visiting hours for patients in the East Wing are going to be ending in 5 minutes. We will be opening the hours once more at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Thank you. Uh, I rubbed my eyes. I guess I have to come back tomorrow. I stood up and begin, and things began to feel fuzzy. Like television static. I walked out of the elevator and into the hospital waiting room. Uh, have a good day, sir. I waved to a brick wall. Uh, I walked into a payphone. I grabbed it once I saw it was about to fall over. I stood it back up and stared at it, waiting for it to be fully balanced. Okay, cool. I began walking once again, but stopped. I turned to face the phone. Uh, it's worth a shot. I muttered and pulled out two coins. I put them in a machine and dialed the number I had put in memory. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Dad. Oh, Finn. What's up, kid? Well, Dad, I... I trailed off as I thought over the events that took place not too long out, not too long ago. You see, I gripped the phone tightly and my hand shook slightly. A tear ran down my face. Dad, I just... Yuri, she... Like a dam had burst, I began to cry to my father over my... over the phone. Hey, hey, buddy. His voice was switched from tired to concerned parent nearly instantly. What's wrong? Why are you crying? I just... I don't know what to do, Dad. What do you mean? My girlfriend, Yuri. She's in the hospital. Apparently she's sleeping off anesthesia, but it's taking way too long. Whoa, whoa. Slow down. To start from the beginning, all right? Uh, all right. He took a deep breath. I know it's probably not going to be easy, but I'm here. I'm here and I'm listening. And I love you. Don't forget about that, too. He chuckled. I smiled and then sniffled. Thanks, Dad. So, what's this about a hospital? Well, I... Yuri got hurt. Badly. What happened? According to the doctors, she has major ar artery damage to her left wrist and severe head trauma. Or something like that. I can't remember every detail. Well, okay. Let's go one at a time. What happened to her head? Well, the witnesses say that she fell out of a portable toilet and onto some concrete. We were at the carnival and she... She what? She, uh... I sniffled. She tried to call me, Dad. I said I would be there for her. She told me she was close. And I... My phone, it... Wait, close to what? Close to cutting herself, Dad! I looked around. All attention was drawn to me. Uh, sorry. I waved my hand and turned away. I didn't want to look at them. Uh, excuse me? Cutting herself? Yuri. Dang it. Promise this stays between me and you? Cross my heart. Okay. Yuri. She... I lowered her voice. 
she suffers from some pretty severe self-harm tendencies. Whoa, that's pretty heavy, boy. Yeah, right? I snorted, but it hurt more than anything. So, she... I'm guessing that's what happened with her left wrist? I exhaled deeply. Yeah, the working theory is that she caught herself too deep in that bathroom, got weak, then fell out, hitting her head. And I just go back to what I said earlier. She tried to call me before she cut. I said I would be there for her, and I wasn't. I just wasn't. You weren't there for her? When she was about to cut herself? Look, sometimes you can be a knucklehead, but that's unlike you. So what happened? Did she do it anyway, and you tried her best, but her issues were just that severe? Well, it... My phone. It died. My voice cracked. Your phone died? What, while you were talking to her? Or did you not get any kind of call because it was dead? It died while I was talking to her. Yeesh. But wait. Wait, wait, wait. Do you feel guilty about what happened? Well, of course. If I had just charged my phone more, it wouldn't have happened. I had an alarm set and I was supposed to wake up early, but I put my phone in a broken socket. My phone would have been able to charge more and I... You shut the heck up. My mouth shut tight. You shut the heck up right now. Your phone died, and that's why you feel guilty. Because your phone died in an opportune time, you round it back and blame it on you for not charging it enough? How stupid can you be? What do- No, no. I'm talking. Look, you can be a little ridiculous sometimes, but I think this takes the cake. Look, I know I'm your dad, and I shouldn't be saying that, but you needed to hear it. Uh, he audibly sighed. None of what happened is your fault, okay? None of it. You're just a kid. You shouldn't have to deal with someone else's issues. Even if you love her, all of that self-harm stuff is for some doctor. Not for some, what, 15-year-old kid? Dad, I'm almost 18. I know, Goober. Which is why you need to learn that you're too old for this crap. Don't play the blame game. Talk to her. Get her some real help. If she doesn't want to, then you need to decide whether or not dating this girl is going to be fruitful. Uh, you can love her, but a relationship is a two-way street. The fact that you felt all of that about her situation just shows how much you care. Well, how much does he care? Does she care? Uh, a lot, I would hope. Well, you're just going to see it. You're just going to have to see it for yourself. I'm sure she loves you too, but you need to make sure you both love yourselves. You can rely on other people all the time, you know? Yeah, I hear you. You get me? I get you. Uh, you need anything else? I thought of this over. No, I think, I think I'm good. I smiled softly. Good. I love you, boy. I love you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. I put the phone back on the box, hanging up the call. I sighed, but I smiled wider. Love you, Dad. <laughs> it's always good to have a, uh, a father figure, and of course, a father to help you out on situations like this, so. I I'm glad that helped. Thanks, Dad. I opened up the door to Yuri's hospital room. It was the next day. She, she had moved slightly and now had a book on her nightstand. Dang it. Dang it, dang it. She woke up already. And I wasn't there. Why do I... Don't play the blame game. Uh, I sighed again. I walked up to Yuri and slowly shook her awake. Hey, Yuri. Oh, she's in a hospital gown and bandages on her head. Okay, Yuri. She slowly opened her eyes. She slowly stretched, but very clearly had a tough time moving her arm. Hello, Finn. I, uh, 
Her voice drooped. Yuri? I, uh... I am... glad you're here. What the heck was that? Well, of course. I'm glad you're okay. Ah, uh, think the maker. Oh my. Okay, okay. We're fine. We're fine, fellow Yuri fans. We're fine. Yuri lovers too. Okay. Just gonna calm down and uh see how this goes in the next one. Who boy, who boy. We're all right. We're all right, Yuri. <laughs>